everyone. Thank you for tuning into my video. Today we'll be doing a service on a Pioneer SX1280. Uh, we will check the DC offset, the idle current, and adjust the wattage needles if needed. Uh, I will not be cleaning the switches on this unit because I've done it pretty recently and none of them are making any static or noise. But if you have a 1280 and you need to clean the switches, if you follow along on my SX1080 service, it goes into detail on how to remove the faceplate and how to get access to the circuit board so you can properly clean them or clean the switches. So if you follow that video, it'll show you what to do to get access to those. But with this unit, we're just gonna check the off DC offset, the IO current, and adjust the wattage needles if we have to. So uh, let's get to it. The tools required for this service are pretty simple. You just need a Phillips screwdriver to remove the bonnet and the grill, a small flathead screwdriver to adjust your VRs, uh, two speaker wired jumper wires <coughs> that I use to hook up to the speaker outputs that you can hook your meter up to while adjusting the wattage needles. You will need your multimeter, of course, some jumper alligator clips, and your RCA to headphone jack adapter so you can play a signal through the unit. And that is basically it, so let's get to it. All right, so to gain access to the preamp boards, which is where our adjustments are, and the pins we need to uh, hook our multimeter up to, we need to start by removing this grill and by removing this uh, bonnet here. So first, uh, they come off in, in a specific order. So first, you have to remove the grill. This is done by removing these four screws in each corner. And once that is off, you can remove the bonnet. And that is done by removing two screws on each side. And you will need your Phillips screwdriver for that. So I will get those off, and I'll get back to you. All right, now that we have the bonnet and the grill removed, we now have access to our two preamp boards here and here. On those preamp boards are the pins that we need to hook our multimeters up to, multimeter up to, and the VRs that need to be adjusted. So there's a total of four VRs. There's one here, one here, one back there, and one here. And that's to adjust the uh, DC offset and the idle current on this unit. So we'll start by uh, adjusting the DC offset. I will try and get the camera in a better angle so you can see the pins that I'm hooking up to. I'll also put a picture up on the screen of a close-up of the pins so you can get an idea what we're doing. Um, they're all numbered, which is nice, so it'll tell you to put the pins between. I think it's pin 14 and ground for the DC offset. So you just look for pin 14 and hook up your alligator clips and, and then uh, you're, you're ready to go. So I'll, I'll try and get the camera repositioned into a spot where you can see, and then uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so to adjust the DC offset, we'll start on the left channel here. We need to connect our multimeter between pin 14 and ground, and we need to see that it reads uh, plus or minus 20 millivolts. So we will do that by getting our jumper, loop, jumper alligator clip here. Hooking it up to pin 14. Get my clip. <clears throat> so they, luckily they all start in order. So this is pin 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. You probably can't see, but it's the blue wire. I'm gonna hook up my lead to pin 14. And then we'll hook it up to the positive side, positive lead in my multimeter. I'll get another jumper lead. I'll hook it up to a spot on the chassis for chassis ground. Okay, my multimeter is set up and now we are ready to see what the DC offset is. So I will turn my meter on to millivolts and I will turn on the power. Make sure there's no input selected, it says. 
deselect the speakers, volume is off. So now we'll turn it on. Okay, let's see, it's kind of high. So let it kind of stabilize for a second, see if it comes back down. <clears throat> and to adjust this uh, setting, the DC offset, it is with uh, VR1, which is the one that's right here. You have VR1 and VR, see, yeah, VR1 uh, back here and VR2's right here. And on the other side, VR1's here and VR2's right there. Okay, so it looks like it's around 200 millivolts. Let me get my screwdriver. And we will go to adjust VR1. We'll see if we can get this thing down to 20 millivolts. That's pretty far away from 20 millivolts. The VRs on this unit have been replaced. I replaced them when I did the rebuild on the unit. Oops, I'm going the wrong way. Maybe right here, I'm gonna keep going up. Very finicky. <laughs> it's the slightest movement. That might be the best I can get right there. It's pretty close, kind of fluctuating around there. That's much better than whatever it was, like 190 millivolts. So I'm happy with that. Uh, the process is exactly the same for the other side. Just hook up your meter between uh, pin 14 and ground, and VR1 is the one closest to you. So I will do that off camera so I don't bore you with that. And then we will adjust the idle current. All right, so I have adjusted the DC balance on the right channel. And uh, it was around the same, 140 millivolts, got that back down to, I think it was 17, fluctuating between 15 and 17. So that's back in the spec. Uh, now we are ready to adjust the idle current. So to do that, we need to hook the positive uh, lead of our multimeter up to pin 17 and the negative terminal of our multimeter to pin 11. And we have to make sure that it reads uh, 15 millivolts or at least in the range of 10 to 25 millivolts. So we will start by hooking up our meter, of course. So we're gonna put the positive lead on pin 17. So we're gonna locate pin 17, 15, 16, there it is, 17. Carefully put that on, hook that up to my lead, set that off to the side, and pin 11, pin 11 is right up front, it's this green guy right here, hook that up to the negative terminal. Just like that, and now we are ready. So we'll turn the meter back on to millivolts. No input is selected. And we will turn on the power switch. Give it a second. Zero. Oh, there it goes. It's like, wow, <laughs> no idle current. <clears throat> okay, and it does want you to check this after the unit has been on for or passing current for around 10 minutes or so. This unit's been on for 
don't know, 15 or 20 minutes. So it should be pretty stable, but we'll keep an eye on it and see where it goes. Uh, looks like it's just gonna be pretty low. I'm pretty happy with that reading, actually. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna adjust it. Um, I like the idle current and it might just keep creeping up to right where it needs to be at 15 millivolts or at least in the 10 to 25 and that's pretty dang close so I'm pretty happy with that. But if your unit uh, does not, uh, it has a high idle current to adjust the idle current on the left channel it is with VR2 and VR2 is the one that's kind of located right here and on the right channel it is located in the middle as well. And that's, uh, you adjust that to raise or lower your idle current. So if your unit is experiencing some high idle current, you would just dial that in with the, either one of those VRs. Um, I'm pretty happy with the DC offset and the idle current adjustment on this. And now we are ready to uh, adjust the wattage needles. So we'll check those out, get the camera repositioned, and I'll get back to you. Okay, so I've adjusted the idle current on the right channel and it was at 11 millivolts. So I'm very happy with the readings that the unit's giving me on the DC balance and the idle current. So now we are ready to adjust the wattage needles. So to do that, uh, I'm gonna use my RCA to headphone jack adapter so I can plug my phone into the unit and play a signal through it. And then also I have a pair of jumper wires hooked to the speaker outputs and I have that hooked to my multimeter so we can see what the voltage reading is as I turn up the volume so we can get to these uh, to the right spot to adjust the needles. So I will get the camera readjusted. I'll try and get two angles so you can see the needles and the meter and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, I have everything hooked up. I have my RCA to headphone jack hooked up to my phone. I have my multimeter hooked up to a speaker output so we can monitor the voltage. And we are now ready to check the wattage needles. So to do this, we'll need to apply a one kilohertz signal through the unit. And we want to adjust the volume level till we get a voltage reading of, I believe it was 37.95 volts. And at that voltage, we, the wattage needles should be right at the 180 mark right there, both of them. And so also to do this, you need to make sure that your base and treble, uh, base and treble adjustments are at zero and your tone switch is off. <clears throat> so uh, let's get to it. So now I will turn my meter on to volts AC. Turn the unit on. Wait for the protection relay to click. There we go. Select speaker A and I will select the aux input and I will play the signal. So now we have a one kilohertz signal playing through and we're gonna turn up the volume till we see 37.95 volts. See the needles starting to climb. Oh, right there, so 37.9 volts. Both needles should be right at the 180 mark. So let me get a closer look. Both look really good. They look spot on, actually. I'm surprised. That's uh, perfect. Um, that's how you adjust the wattage, or that's how you check the wattage needles. To adjust them, I will put up a picture of where the VRs are located to adjust the wattage needles. It's pretty simple. They're, uh, they're kind of behind the uh, power supply board. But I'll put up a picture right now so you can see where the VR adjustments are for the needles if you need to adjust yours on your unit. Very simple. Same process on, on the other units if you've watched my videos. You just adjust them up or down to turn the needle, to move the needle up or down. Very, very simple. So I'll put the picture up so you can see that and adjust yours if needed. But that is basically it for the service on this unit. We've checked the DC offset and adjusted it, and we've checked the idle current, and we've checked the wattage needles, make sure that they're 
spot on at 180. And that's basically it. So I will put the grill and the bonnet back on and I'll get back to you guys. All right, it is all back together and I just finished play testing it and I can assure you it sounded incredible. I would expect nothing less from this unit. And that is basically it for the service for adjusting the DC offset, the idle current, and the wattage needles. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to let me know. And thank you for watching.